Hey there, ACCA Performance Management students. In this video, I'm going to help you get a pass on your upcoming exam. You've been asking about the balanced scorecard. Here, I'll demystify the topic and I'll take you through a past exam question. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like. And if you would like access to all of my performance management videos, including premium content, and join my WhatsApp group, click on the link below. All right, guys, let's get started. I've got a document open on my screen. It comes from the famous pharmaceutical company called Novartis. I found this document on their website in the Investor Relations section. Part of this document talks about director remuneration, how they're going to reward the senior management of the company. And they will be assessed on this balanced scorecard. So here we are, we have found a balanced scorecard. Notice that it's not capitalized, it's not the balanced scorecard, the original version of this popularized in the 1990s. So the concept of a balanced scorecard is now everywhere in business. And it's about measuring performance. If we go back in time to the 1970s and earlier, companies primarily used financial metrics from their financial statements to measure measure the performance of the company and of management. And modern commentators say that only measuring the financial perspective, that's going to be problematic because the financial statements are really looking to the past. Those are just summarized transactions. It might promote short-term thinking if we're only looking for profit this year, we're not thinking about the long-term future, we might defer spending on R&D, we're not going to worry about marketing because those spending on those items will hurt this year's profit. And the financial metrics can also be distorted from non-cash items like provisions, depreciation, or changes in IFRS. The modern view of performance measurement says that only using the financials is too narrow of a focus. So let us now balance the financial perspective right here with non-financial metrics, which we have down here. That is the essence of the balanced scorecard. Balance financial and non-financial KPIs to provide a fuller picture of company and manager performance. So Novartis, they're measuring their management from six dimensions. We see financial, but then we also have growth, innovation, productivity, quality, and people. Now, that doesn't match the balanced scorecard in your textbook exactly, but in real life, that's not a problem. It's a model that we use and we adapt to our business as we see fit. And then, after we've decided on what dimensions of performance we would like to measure, we then, we then determine performance metrics or KPIs that we will use to measure each area of performance. So we, we can see here for the financial, Novartis is measuring sales, operating income, net income. Guys, that's operating profit and net profit and free cash flow. So a simple, concise set of metrics. For growth, new product sales, product sales in emerging markets, and market share. All of that linking to the growth of the company. Innovation, we have a pipeline of new drugs. We've got the new appro approvals 
That's, those are the drugs coming out of the pipeline, going into the market. Proof of concept. Those are the new ideas. Will these drugs cure people and heal them, make them healthier? And then filings. That's in the middle of the pipeline. Filings with the different government bodies. Can we sell this drug to the public? I think you get the idea here. Productivity, here we're measuring working capital efficiency. Quality, remediation, are customers coming back to them with problems? Re regulatory compliance, are the governmental bodies coming back to, to, the, to the pharmaceutical company with issues? And then people, so we've got turnover and retention. Are we keeping our employees in the company, that's a good sign. Are they motivated and engaged? Are we training them? And are we promoting diversity and inclusion? So guys, there we have it in real life, a balanced scorecard. Let's bring the balanced scorecard back to your upcoming performance management exam. If this comes up in your exam, you need to be able to explain what it is, what are the four classic dimensions of the balanced scorecard, and then you'll need to be able to either suggest KPIs that should fit into each section of the balanced scorecard, or in an objective test question, you should be able to place someone else's performance metric into the appropriate section. So the balanced scorecard begins with understanding the company's strategy, their vision, where do they want to be in the future? How are they going to get there? Based on this, we'll then decide upon financial performance metrics. These will typically come from the company's financial statements. Let's measure profit margins. Let's measure cash flow. Let's measure growth in sales, for example. Then we have to measure C, customer. We have to measure the business from the customer perspective because it's happy and delighted customers that will buy our products and repeat purchase. So we need to measure customer satisfaction, customer loyalty. Then we need to measure internal processes because it's on-time delivery, it's high quality, that will delight our customers. So it's the internal processes making our customers happy. It's also the internal processes, time per unit, waste, that also has an impact on financial performance. The last section of the balanced scorecard, learning and growth. This is about our people. It's motivated, engaged staff that will contribute to delighted, satisfied customers, working efficiently, driving our processes, and ultimately then driving financial performance. Some books say innovation down here, innovation and learning. Either way is fine. We can also measure market share here as well. Remember, in real life, this is just a framework that we can apply to any organization as we see fit. Enough with the theory. Let's move on. Let's solve a past exam question together. I have the classic Jam Air open here on my screen. At this point, I really suggest click on the link. The link is in the description. It's also right here. Click on the link, download this question, try it on your own, read the scenario. When you've done that, continue viewing the video. You'll get much more out of it. Welcome back. You might be confused by the number of marks. This comes from an older version of the PM exam, but don't worry about that. The concepts are the same, the style of question is the same, and the scenario is also quite similar to the, the types of scenarios that you could see in your upcoming PM exam. If we zoom in on the requirements, we see 
the verb describe. So we are looking at a section C constructed response style question. And you will need to describe each of the four perspectives of the scorecard. And look, that's for six marks. So we know that there is one and a half mark for each perspective. So I'm going to cover my bases for each perspective. I'll explain what it is and give a very quick generic example. Now, in the next requirement, you would press next in the, in the computer-based exams and you'd get another, another requirement. For each perspective, identify one goal and one measure. So when you are identifying things, you can give the markers a sentence fragment. And we want to identify a goal and a measure that can be used to measure Jam Air's performance. These goals and measures must be relevant to Jam Air, and we also need to explain why we've chosen them. So now we have nine marks. So if we divide nine by four, that's two marks and a little bit more. So let me take you through my approach to answering this question. We're going to need to tailor our answer in requirement B to this company. So very important, we read the scenario and we learn that it's a low cost airlines similar to EasyJet, Ryanair, most regions of the world have these nowadays. And we learn a bit about their operating model, flying to the, the smaller cities, not directly to the capital cities, one type of aircraft, leasing the company, re leasing the planes rather than buying them, only one type of seat, ordering online, everything's done online, and no in-flight entertainment. So hopefully you're familiar with this operating model. Then we learn a bit more about their internal processes. We learn about how they are ranked by the country's aviation authority. And we learn about their cancellations. We learn about staff absenteeism. We learn more in the next paragraph. We learn about their refueling time. The turnaround time is 50 minutes. In low-cost airlines, they want to turn the planes around quickly. The more flying time, the more time they're earning revenue. Now, we also learn about an increase in competitive rivalry. We learn that the market is amazing. The overall market is growing rapidly, but the company enjoys a monopoly status that they're about to loon, lose. Okay, so the global players are about, about to enter the country of Shania. So team, that's our little scenario, and we'll use that shortly when we get to part B. I'm now in the exam simulation environment. Let's make quick work of part A, describing the four perspectives of the balanced scorecard. So I will use subheadings to do this. We've got financial, customer, internal processes, learning, and growth. Now I will use short, simple sentences to describe each of the perspectives. Here's my answer. Let me read for you my write-up of the first perspective, financial. Here we measure performance from the traditional financial perspective, and metrics will come from the company's financial statements. Metrics might include profit margins, cash flow, or return on capital employed. 
I've correctly demonstrated my technical knowledge. I explained what I mean. I've given an example to further illustrate the point. That's about as good as I can do in the time allowed. I'm confident I'm getting comfortable passing marks here, if not perfect marks. Guys, you can pause this video here, you can read what I've written, and you can see that I've used the same approach with the other perspectives. For this next requirement, we've got a lot of verbs there, don't we? When I've got a lot of things to do, and I'm using a formal framework for my answer, I'm going to use a table to stay nicely organized. So I'm going to open up a table and we got the perspective. We've got the goal, the metric, and then our justification. And we've got four perspectives. So I've got a five by four table here. And I'm going to lay this out. First column will be perspective. Second column will be goal. Third column will be measure. Fourth column will be justification. So that's my first step. Now for each perspective, well I've got to list those out again. We've got financial, customer, internal processes, and then learning and growth. So at this point, with my word processor, right, that's on the right side of the screen, I can also view the scenario on the left side of the screen. I can go back through that scenario and I can identify my goals and my measures. Guys, I've written up my answer. First thing I did, go back into the scenario and find a reasonable goal for each perspective. Everything that I write linked to the specific circumstances of Jam Air. Then I thought of a, of a basic performance metric. Then I said, why? So let me read for you my first one. The goal I've, I've set was maintain their profit margins. The measure could be the operating profit margin. And my justification, competitive rivalry will be increasing shortly. Jam Air will likely need to reduce prices, so measuring profit margins will help them see if they are also successful in reducing costs and maintaining profitability. I've justified my measure. I've linked my answer to the little scenario, so I'm earning credit. I'll read one more for you. For customer, I said our goal is to delight our customers, keep them satisfied. However we want to phrase that is fine. The measure that I've chosen, customer satisfaction rating, and my rationale, unhappy customers will likely go to the new airlines when they enter the market. So Jam Air should me measure customer satisfaction. Happy customers will remain loyal and continue using Jam Air. Kind of stating the obvious, but that's what I need to do. Explain why I've chosen that goal in that measure. Notice the short, simple sentences. I'm not using a fancy academic style, I'm not using lots of jargon. You won't be judged on grammar, on spelling, on style. As long as the marking team understands the point you're making, you'll get the credit. Team, that's my approach. You can pause the video here and you can see the rest of my answer. Performance management team, I hope you found this video useful. I've got a playlist of more videos queued up for you right here. You can subscribe to that if you'd like more help. Guys, 
good luck on your upcoming pm exam.